the waistline starts right here in the kitchen with the food that you take in. And that is where the glycemic index comes in, identifying quality over quantity foods. But before we go into understanding the glycemic index, let's review just a bit, specifically weight loss strategies that we've talked about already. You know, what doesn't work? Calorie restricted diets. Calorie restricted diets slow the metabolism as much as 15%. And the reason it does that is because when your body's not getting the fuel that it needs, it will break down muscle for energy and keep the fat. Muscle is metabolically active, meaning that it burns calories and fat doesn't. Then we have prepared meal plans that set you up for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Well, while they can be effective, what happens when you stop ordering them or buying them? What have you learned? You don't learn how to eat or how to prepare foods and plan for the rest of your life. And then you have meal replacement shake programs that might have you do two shakes a day and one small meal. They don't have a great success rate either. You know, studies show that in the first year, 95% of the people gain the weight back. And in year two, 97% gain it back. And then what about exercise? Exercise alone doesn't cut it. It takes more than just pushing the plate away and moving more. I mean, I truly believe if it was just about calories in versus calories out, then none of us would have a weight problem. So what does work? Well, we know keeping a food log, journaling, and taking that information and sharing it with a buddy or a coach increases your success. And the low glycemic index eating, which translates into a balanced diet of healthy fats, low glycemic carbohydrates, and protein, promotes fat loss while preserving lean muscle mass. And we know that monitoring and improving your body composition by reducing fat and increasing muscle mass, this will help repair and improve your metabolism. Muscle dictates metabolism. Then of course, creating and improving behaviors through education and accountability to make it a true lifestyle change resulting in effective and permanent weight loss success. And that is everything that the Transitions Lifestyle System embodies. Journaling, improving body composition, healthy eating habits, and behavior improvements to create a true lifestyle through education and accountability. So now, let's talk about low glycemic index eating. What is the glycemic index? The glycemic index is simply a ranking on a carbohydrate and how it impacts your blood sugar levels. Carbohydrates are the preferred fuel of the body. Now remember, when you eat a carbohydrate, your body takes it, breaks it down into sugar or glucose, then insulin is released, and it's supposed to take that sugar and utilize it in the muscle or store it for usable fuel. Why is that important? Because the type of carbohydrate you choose will determine whether you lose fat or you gain it. Low glycemic carbohydrates impact your blood sugar levels positively, creating sustained energy, fullness, and mental clarity. Low glycemic foods are foods like vegetables, lean meats, legumes, lentils, nuts, and some fruits. Foods that generally are packed full of fiber and nutrients. As an example, let's take a look at an apple. It contains fiber, vitamins, and minerals, and lots of carbohydrates. But the carbohydrates are bound up in the fiber of the apple, so it takes your body a fair amount of time to release those carbohydrates, therefore steadily releasing insulin and converting and storing the carbohydrate as usable fuel. So some people would call the apple medium burning carbohydrate or in medical terms it has a lower glycemic index than straight sugar. But if you take high glycemic carbohydrates like refined white sugar or a candy bar which has no fiber or nutrients and you put that in your mouth, well then your body converts it into blood sugar very rapidly. So instead of escorting the glucose to the muscle, the body stores the glucose as fat. When we eat that way, high glycemic foods, what we're actually doing is that we're trying to run a metabolic engine on inefficient fuel. And the human metabolic engine was not designed to run on low grade fuels. High glycemic foods is not just sugar or candy bars. High glycemic foods are foods like white flour, certain baked goods, starchy foods, and yeah, sugary foods. Eating high glycemic foods lead to blood sugar fluctuations, highs and lows, which result in fatigue, increased appetite, and food cravings, particularly for sweets. And there are numerous studies that have linked high glycemic lifestyles to obesity, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, and increased risk for cardiovascular disease. There are also some studies that have shown high glycemic lifestyles could possibly increase the risk for certain cancers, like breast, prostate, and colorectal. 
On the other hand, eating low glycemic index is not just about weight loss. It's about your health and improving quality of life. Several studies have shown that low glycemic index eating, as we know, can facilitate weight loss by helping the body burn fat more efficiently and curb your appetite and cravings. Following a low glycemic index lifestyle can improve blood sugar control and improve insulin sensitivity. There are even benefits for the heart. Low glycemic index eating has been shown to lower levels of triglyceride, cholesterol, and C-reactive protein, that's inflammation, all known risk factors of heart disease. Now there are several factors that influence the glycemic index of a food. And when you look at the glycemic values, well, 1 to 55 is considered low, 56 to 69 is medium, and 70 to 100 is considered high. Now what can influence the glycemic index ranking? The type of starch or sugar it contains, the acid content, the amount of soluble fiber, which swells in water, slowing the rate at which your body breaks it down, and the extent of processing and or cooking that you do to it. Highly processed foods generally have a higher glycemic index, and cooking, processing, and age all affect a food's glycemic index. For example, underripened bananas, they have a glycemic index of 43, and that's low. And 85% of the carbs in those bananas are starch, changing into sugar as the banana ripens, changing the glycemic index to 74, which now makes it high. Processing changes it. The glycemic index of whole grains, like barley, bulgur, oats, and whole wheat, generally have a low glycemic index. But when you take those grains and you crack them, cut, or split, breaking down the quality of it, like to a fine flour or to make it cook faster, well, that will make it high glycemic due to smaller particle size. And the protective, harder to digest outer coating has been removed, causing rapid digestion and your glucose to raise. Perfect example, whole oats. Whole oats are lower glycemic than instant oatmeal, which is made from smashed oat grains. Also, the way you cook certain foods can break down the quality of it, altering the physical form of the molecule making up that food. So it can raise the sugar content and destroy nutrients. Another example is a white potato. Depending on where it comes from, it can have a glycemic index ranking of 56. But when you cook it and eat it hot, it can take the glycemic index up to 88 or higher. And then lastly, what can influence how rapidly your body can break down food into sugar is the amount and type of fiber, fat, and protein in that food or in that meal. Fiber, fat, and protein are low glycemic, and those nutrients slow the absorption of carbohydrates when combined in your meal. The more fat and protein there is in a food, the longer it takes to digest. However, fat is not the best way to lower the glycemic index. Depending on what type of fat you eat, it can increase your risk for heart disease. And fat is very calorically dense, taking a long time to break down, increasing your chance that it'll get stored as fat. And an overconsumption of fat is not only not good for your heart, it's not fanny flattering either. So wow, that's a lot of information. What do we do with all that? I mean, you're saying now I have to focus on all these numbers when I eat? No. That is where Transition's Lifestyle System is your support. You have the Daily Journal that has a list of foods breaking them down to low, medium, and high. You have the Glycemic Index Food Guide that gives you a list of all the foods so when you're out and about town, you can make the right decision on the run. You also have TransitionsLifestyle.com where you can create your food plans for the week, print out the recipe and grocery lists. We've done all the work for you so you don't have to worry. And in the process of education and application, as time goes on, you won't have to carry around a food list or a book. It will just come natural to you. Trust me, improving your eating habits is going to be easy, it's going to be fun, and you will be successful. Here are some basic suggestions I want to give to you so you can maximize your results following the Transitions Lifestyle System. First, set yourself up for success. Clean out the junk in your kitchen and your cupboards so that you won't be tempted to binge and set yourself back. I also want to suggest to you, before you're too far along on your lifestyle transition, Get those close to you on board. Explain to them what this means to you to accomplish your goals and then ask them for their encouragement and their support. Who knows, they may even be inspired to do it with you. Maximize your results. If you started reviewing your journal and the DVD series, one of our first suggestions to jumpstart your success is to do a veggie and fruit detox or what some refer to as a cleanse. This is something I highly recommend. It helps jumpstart your metabolism 
gives your digestive system a much needed rest and helps cleanse your palate from sweets and fats. Simply refer to your transition journal or pop in the DVD, Jumpstart Your Success, for more detail. You may even want to discuss this with your transitions representative or certified coach to make sure that a detox is something for you. Next, don't skip breakfast. For some of you, you find yourself hungry in the morning, but too focused on the day ahead to tune into what your body really needs. Foregoing breakfast is a big, big mistake, one that will set you up to be held in the thrall of food cravings throughout the day. Remember, the energy and life that you bring to each day will enter the body through nutrition. When you skip meals, especially breakfast, there are several factors that will hinder your weight loss. Number one, people who skip breakfast often go full out on lunch. Most end up consuming large amounts of junk food, fast food, and basically foods that aren't healthy and that will increase the weight gain. The second thing that will happen when you skip breakfast is your metabolism will slow down to a crawl. What occurs is your body's natural self-defense when it senses food is scarce is to slow down your metabolism. When that happens, you know it, your body will go into fat storing mode and your body will hold on to that fat for protection. If your mornings are so jam-packed with trying to set up your day that you take care of yourself last, then you may want to consider the transitions on the go bars or the shakes with some blended fresh fruit. Portion sizes. It's very important to remember that this is about quality and not quantity. With this program, there's no need to carry around measuring cups. Instead, if you are concerned, mark your portions with your hands. One palm size of protein along with your vegetables is a good way to mark a healthy portion of food. And trust me, no one has ever gained weight from eating too many vegetables and lean protein. Breads, cereals, and pasta. Now this is a big suggestion to you. If you really want optimal results and speed up your success, then cut these out for the first six weeks. And yeah, I'm even talking about high fiber, whole grain, low glycemic breads. What I found is that breads, cereals, and pastas with many individuals impair their weight loss due to the gluten that is found in those items. And some individuals even have increased food cravings as a reaction to consuming gluten, but they're unaware of the reason why they have the desire to eat continuously or even out of control. Follow what we call level one eating for the first six weeks, staying away from bread, pastas, and cereals. Track your results, and then after the six weeks, slowly incorporate high fiber bread, cereals, and pastas back in. And when you do eat them, make sure that you journal how you feel. See if you notice any bloating, allergies, and or discomfort up to 48 hours of eating that food. Then you'll be able to determine whether you're a person that will have to limit or watch your grain intake. Rule of thumb when following the transitions lifestyle and the glycemic index, on the glycemic index scale, high numbers are bad, low numbers are good, most of the time. You need to start making common sense decisions. Chocolate, ice cream, potato chips, and pound cake are all low glycemic, but they're high in fat and sugar too. On the other hand, parsnips, peas, watermelon, and the occasional baked potato are all high glycemic, but they are undoubtedly a better choice if you had to make that decision. So, broccoli is a better choice than a donut, and an apple is a better choice than a bagel, even if the glycemic index is the same. Next, natural foods have a lower glycemic index than processed foods, and uncooked fresh vegetables are better than frozen or overcooked vegetables but you don't have to eat them raw, just don't overcook your vegetables. Whole grains have a lower glycemic index than processed grains, but do be aware of the gluten. Fruits and vegetables are pretty much fine, even if the glycemic index is high. High glycemic vegetables and fruits are vegetables and fruit full of enzymes and nutrients. Where the problem lies, if for example you're eating melon, which is high glycemic all day, every day, then that's not going to support you in your weight loss goals and help get your metabolism back on track. There's no calorie restriction with following low glycemic index eating. It's about eating healthy ratio of proteins, carbohydrates, and good fats. Getting a healthy mind and body with the glycemic index is about making common sense decisions and choices. Making conscious choices to choose and eat the foods that are going to support your metabolism and your weight loss efforts. Following transitions, does that mean that you're never going to have your favorite carrot cake or occasional beer? No, but what you need to focus on is getting your system, getting your metabolism back on track. 
and when you have repaired and increased your metabolism, then the occasional cheat doesn't go right to your rear or your belly for the guys.